Good morning, friends. How's everyone doing today? Well, what a difference a week makes. I think last week when we had our weekly garden walkabout, only a few tulips were in bloom, and now all the tulips in the backyard are open with the exception of some in the raised beds. And over in the driveway garden, we have lots of late tulips to look forward to next week. But let's dive right into this weekly garden tour. I think we could even call this the April garden tour because it is late April now. So here I mixed salmon impression tulips with Negrita double tulips. And what I tried to do was make my own mixture of tulips and then repeat those mixtures over and over again as you walk down what I call the main flower walk. So that's the first mixture that I have. And then right next to that, we have some gorgeous Labella Pock tulips. I can only get my hands on 100 Labella Pock tulips. So I planted these under both of my largest limelight hydrangeas. I think Labella Pock translates to the beautiful era. And that sure is a beautiful tulip, isn't it? So even times when I only had 100 tulips, I did try to repeat it at least once. For me, I think the standout of the whole show is the mixture of apricot impression and agree to double. And those are the more vibrant orange tulips that you're seeing right here at the entrance. And I do have the gate closed right now because Grace is next to me. I have salmon impression, which is this one here mixed with purple pride and I planted these a little more loosely. I usually dig trenches and plant the tulips really close together because that's the kind of show I like. But there in the entrance, I space them a little bit further apart. So this is basically the color that I'm going to try to maintain in the main flower walk all growing season. These vivid purples, oranges, pinks and magentas. Hey, by the way, look at that amazing prairie fire crab apple. I can't believe how glorious it is this year. I think I got that for $20 at Tractor and Supply a few years ago. So here's our next mix, friends. This is apricot impression mixed with Negrita double. And I wanted to get varying heights within the mixes too, just to see how that worked. And here's that mixture repeated on the right-hand side of the border. I have some mulch down, but once we get to the stone rug, you'll see I ran out of mulch. That's all right, I'll get to it eventually. What do you think, friends? Is this combo speaking to you? I love orange and purple mixed together. And the older I get, the more I really prefer really vivid, saturated colors. You'll see once we get over to the hydrangea room, we have all white blooms over there. And the feeling is just completely different. This tool up here, I'm gonna put the name on the screen because I think I mispronounce it every time I say it. But that was kind of an add-on at the end of the fall season. I didn't plan to add those into the main flower walk, but they were gifted to me and I'm certainly not going to pass up free tulips. And so I did some mixing with that one too. So here we have lots of different tulips all together. Isn't this a lovely picture? So in the back there, that lighter pink is salmon impression. The vibrant orange is apricot impression. Negrita double is that royal purple. The shorter orange double tulip here mixed with the one I can't pronounce is brownie, cat mint, and we do have a lot of geums to look forward to this year. We didn't get to see the geums bloom last year because I had just added them into the garden. So I'm really, really excited about that. So you can see I'm trying to repeat that on both sides. And you can see here's where I ran out of mulch for the week. Next to our flower lady, I repeated again that mixture of salmon impression and purple pride. So I love growing tulips. I love all bulbs. And over the years, I've tried mixing early, mid and late season tulips back here. 
But what I've discovered for myself personally is that I would rather have just early and mid season in one area and then late season in another. So you really get a full glorious show all at once. And then you have that late show somewhere else. And that's what we'll see over in the driveway garden. So how do you like this picture? Now imagine those yellow daffodils are white like they were supposed to be. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is sell the blooms next year and then we'll just have the foliage there and we'll maintain that white background instead of having that really bright yellow. Here we have some more labella pock. Here we have Grace. Hey Grace, how you doing love? Gracie says hi to everybody today. She wants to know what your favorite tulip is, and so do I. We have the old bleeding heart, the pink one, and we also have Alba white. You know, I was just reading the other day that I think was bleeding heart reclassified. Ever since I was a little girl, my grandma used to call it Dicentra, but I think it's been reclassified. I have to look up what it is now. So here's a peek at the hydrangea room. We'll swing back over to that area in just a second. So here's that combination again on a larger scale. And I am seeing what looks like could be tulip fire here. So I will not plant tulips in this particular area for many, many years. Um, you can kind of see on the petals here and here on the leaf. And I did have tulips planted right here last year. So we'll give this area a break, let that soil rest. Back behind that, accent daffodil, still looking great. All these daffodils are still looking great. Pueblo there, mixed with Del Nashaw. Now, if we keep moving forward, you can see I ran out of mulch and I basically just repeated those same combos over and over again. So let's just skip that area for now because I'm a little bit embarrassed, honestly, <laughs> of how it looks over there. Uh, we'll get to it eventually, right? So here in front of the library, we have a couple different varieties of tulips. I wanted to play around with some different mixes, different heights and varying bloom times. So we still have some yet to bloom in these gardens. But here we have Parisima, I believe. Huge, glorious white tulip, bloomed really early, still looking great, a week on I would say. And these two beds I'm really loving. This is something I want to repeat in the landscape. So I think mixing tulips in a raised bed is a great way to get an idea of whether or not you like how those tulips work together before you go ahead and invest in a ton and put them in your landscape. So we have Pink Impression is the tall one right here. This one, you might remember this from other years. This is Columbus. This one here is Janice Joplin. And then I thought I had one more variety in here, which is Albert Hein. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. The Hein has a J in it, and I'm guessing the J is silent. But I don't think those are blooming yet. Yeah, we'll have to check back in on those next week. Same exact bed right here. I think Grace has a tummy ache from eating those rib bones the other day. She's eating a lot of grass today. So more Parisima. And we'll be able to see the other white next week. I just put the trellises here in the beds for now. I'm not sure if I will leave them in these particular beds or not. And I put the larger trellises in the main flower walk and I did plant my blue sweet peas on those trellises. So for our book talk this week, I have something really special to show you inside the library and a different and special book recommendation. But as always, we'll end in the library. So let me show you 
Have I gotten anything done over here since we saw it last? Not much, honestly. I kind of taken a step back if I'm honest, because as you can see, when I mulched over here, I, I ran out of cardboard and now I'm regretting not just waiting because weeds are already popping up. So I need to get some more cardboard for right there and fix that. Pear and bloom. I don't think I really did much back here and it doesn't look great, but we all have those areas, right? But let me turn us this way. So you can see the view from back here right now with all the tulips in bloom. I see that the Coosa dogwood is starting to leaf out now. Coosa dogwood gets its flowers later, more like mid to late May here in my area. How about that prairie fire crab apple? That just sings, doesn't it? Oh, wait till you see the apple tree in the driveway garden. It's two different varieties grafted together and one section blooms pink and the other blooms white. It's just beautiful. I think this is my favorite time of year in the garden with all the fruit trees in bloom. Someone suggested painting the rain barrel. I think that's a great suggestion. I might go ahead and do that or I might just leave that one as is and then Whenever we need a new one, I'll go ahead and buy a gray one. So I can't believe it, friends, but pretty much all the daffodils in the hydrangea room still look good. You know, they're going a little bit papery. Okay, some of them are looking a little bit sad. But overall, I'm still really happy and thankful mainly that we have not gotten too hot and too sunny Sometimes the heat, humidity, and sun comes on really quickly here. And I'll just pretty much have only a few days or a week with all these bulbs. This year I've had much longer and the weather looks wonderful this week. So even our tour next week, I think, we should have a lot of bulbs in bloom. So let me back up this way. So you can see the view from this other gate. And then we'll take a tour going backwards toward the driveway garden. I have some really cool tulips in bloom in a planter in our front yard. Still blooming, but I suppose it is kind of going over now, it is the lingerie. Oh, Gracie, you okay, hon? I just ran into a hydrangea there. You okay? Okay, I think Gracie is okay now. I was worried she might have scraped herself there on the hydrangea. So I think in terms of new tulips that we didn't see last week, well, I don't think any tulips were in bloom last week in this area. We have Ivory Floridale. This is a great tulip. So tall, so beautiful. It really exceeded my expectation. I'm still not really sure how to say this one. It's spelled like Mondial. Then someone typed out the pronunciation for me the other week. Thank you for that. And so I think maybe it's Mondial. Let me know if I'm saying that right now. I guess we will have to come in here on Deadhead. At least the white lion daffodils this week. Lingerie seems to be holding up a little bit better than white lion. And they were blooming at the same time. So I guess that's another good reason to Go for lingerie over white lion if you have the choice. Sensational honeysuckle is planted on the hummingbird trellises. I did manage to get one for each side of the trellis, so we have six plants all together. So let's take a look at white lion. It is starting to fade now. Still beautiful though. And I just love seeing all of these daffodils planted in mass. You know, I live in an area that gets really hot and humid in the summer. Tons of mosquitoes, so many bugs everywhere. And I guess in a way that's probably why I feel okay about investing in all of these spring bulbs because I know this is my favorite time out here in the garden. 
And also I feel like I need the garden a little bit more in the spring than I do in late summer. Would you agree with that? After such a long winter, it just feels like great relief to be greeted with all these blooms. Can you hear the train in the background? Okay, so that's the gate that would take us over to the driveway garden, but let's go this way so that I can get Grace safely back inside as always before we head over there. So there's still a lot that needs to be done in the garden. But what I'm really trying to do this year is use what I have. I have now been at this property nine years. I think I have a picture basically of right here, or maybe it's back even a little bit farther. I think I have a picture of this exact view. When we bought the house, there was a bunch of trash right here. There was trees growing literally like out of the foundation. It was crazy. So that was nine years ago. And it's been a slow and steady process to try to bring the picture that I had in my head to life. I feel like I get a little bit closer every year. There's still so many things that I would do differently, but I'm really thankful for everything that this garden has taught me. It's really been a blessing to be able to learn on a half acre. You know, my dream has always been to move somewhere larger where we have a little more land, a little more privacy. As you can see, we're here on a corner lot on a main road, which is really great for selling cut flowers. But let's take one more look back this way before I put Gracie inside, just in case we get some crazy storm. You never know around here. And I don't want us to miss seeing this beautiful once a year picture. That's the picture, friends. What do you think? Did the painting turn out all right? So that's where we were at that gate. So this is our driveway here. And look at this beautiful apple tree in bloom. So I'm not sure on the one variety, but the previous owner, which was um, a shunned Amish man, he did have a tag on this tree and it said pink lady. So I'm not sure really which variety is which, but this is such a beautiful tree. And then just going down from that, we have the daffodil meadow. This might be a better view, and my husband's rooftop garden is up there. So down here I have Poeticus, beautiful eyes, and Cragford. And these ones we added into the meadow last fall. And over in this side of the meadow we have Shearborn, which is this bright yellow, Lemon Beauty, and British Gamble. And before I talk a little bit more about my thoughts on having a daffodil meadow, I wanted to show you these tulips here. Isn't this a funny name for this tulip? It's called Sensual Touch, which seems just kind of funny because it's a very prickly looking tulip. But I love the colors and I do love the form. So I've always loved the look of a bulb meadow. And whenever we move, I want to have just a ginormous bulb meadow somewhere. One thing that I learned, this is my third year with the daffodil meadow, is that if you have a really invasive, I shouldn't say invasive, a really strong weed in your garden, such as chickweed, you might want to rethink putting the meadow so close to a more formal or cultivated garden because what has been happening to me last year somewhat and this year, it was terrible that since we have to let all of this daffodil foliage die back naturally, that means that the grass is long for about two more months now. And what happens is that the chickweed that's in my lawn here has time to flower, set seed, and throw that seed all over this garden. And nightmare does not even begin to cover the amount of chickweed that is just all over the place in here. 
So that was a lesson learned the hard way and you'll see dandelions back there. I don't mind that quite so much. And I think the other thing is when I put in the first daffodils three years ago, I probably didn't even bother to look and see if I had any weeds like that in the lawn. I just never bothered to even think about it because of course you cut it. And so you just, you don't really notice. And you see when we moved here, sorry, <laughs> almost fell over there. Um, when we moved here, this was all dead plum trees and willow trees lined this part of the driveway. So we wanna get rid of those willows right away. You never want a willow near a water line. They were way too close to our house. But just some things that you learn as you go. Oh, was that a cardinal? Hey, Grace. So a few weeks ago, I had told you that I asked my dad if he might consider painting something for the garden library. When I was looking for a piece of art for the library, I kept finding these antique paintings of young girls asleep next to their dog who was at high alert. Basically, it appeared to me that the young girl was completely at peace in whatever location she found herself because her dog was diligently, loyally, and lovingly watching over her. And I thought about purchasing one of those paintings, but then I got up the courage to ask my dad if he might do something like that of Grace. Because, you know, it's funny, you get to see the really sweet Grace, and she is sweet and loving and kind, but she's also quite protective. And I love that about her too. So let's go into the library and look at this painting that my dad did. If you don't know, my dad is an author and illustrator. That's what he did my whole life. And I'm gonna link his website in the description section below. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the book Pilgrim's Progress. And he just redid that book. His illustrations are so fun and whimsical, and I think you can pre-order it now. I think the book comes out July 2nd, but you can pre-order it on Amazon right now. And you know, I really had a hard month. I don't really wanna talk about what happened, but I almost really just felt like giving up out here. And my dad said, let this be the reset for everything that happened. And when I saw this painting that he did, I just wanted to cry because he captured so beautifully what I want to feel in my garden. I want to feel like this little girl in the painting who finds so much peace and solace in the garden that she can fall asleep under the watchful eye of her loyal companion. And I still long for that. And it's still, I still feel like I'm kind of far away from that. <coughs> but this does give me hope that in the future, this picture is going to be how my garden really makes me feel inside. Well, friends, I think that brings me to the end of our weekly garden walk and talk, or perhaps we should call this the April garden tour, but I'll see you next week for another garden walk and talk. On Wednesday, we have a special guest garden tour, and I should have some vlogs this week as well. Bye friends.